sustained offensive zone pressure, which has been something that's really been lacking. Um, you know, everybody moaned last year about the dump and chase. We've been doing a lot of that this year purely because by the time we've managed to get the puck out of our own zone, the guys are too they're too gubbed to get to an attack in. So they have been skating to the halfway line and dumping it in and changing. Um, there has been signs in those two games for me that the guys are starting to get to know each other now. This is what it comes back to where we've been saying that we had to get the guys in at the right time at the beginning of the season rather than... You know, we can get these players in in August. Hopefully the rest are in by the end of September kind of thing. This is where what pre-season is meant to be for, you know, and we've missed out on that and that's why we're playing catch-up. And we've no one to blame but ourselves really <laughs> for that. So yeah. it's good that the team's finally clicking, but it's really, really disappointing that it's taken to November. Uh, but that's, that's the bed we made for ourselves. We need to lie in it. But as we said, improve, there has been... A noticeable improvement in the, the recent games, which is all you can ask for after a, a terrible start. And if we, the only thing we can take for this is that we'll, we can be forgiven this season for it to an extent. We shouldn't be in this position, but that's what we've, that's what the clan decided to do. If we do the exact same thing next year, I think there's got to be a lot more questions being asked about what what the hell is going on because it's unacceptable. And you kind of preempted what I was going to talk about next, uh, <laughs> Jennifer. And we have kind of talked about it, we've battered on about it this year. You know, if we'd got the guys in sooner, we might not be in as the position we're in in terms of, you know, the number of losses we've taken in. Do you know, overall, one of the most horrifying stats is still, you know, we've scored 59 goals in our 23 games and we've conceded 88, it's an awful big gap. And you can't help but feeling that that is down a lot to the fact that guys were dribbling in over the start of the season and, you know, they didn't really get a chance to know each other. Now, we seem to be, and this could be a false dawn, but we seem to be gelling a wee bit better, yeah? Yeah, I mean, we've got a full team now, although obviously there are still a couple of injuries out, so um, there's just been a hell of a lot of adversity for us, um, but like to take to November to complete your defence, that's that's just not 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 an ideal situation. And obviously, the way that the so so called top line kind of came in, like one played at a time, that there's been so many changes to the lines that you'll probably find that the guys haven't even been able to settle with with the players that they're playing. And it's only now that we're starting to see them um, starting to see them doing what, what they've basically been brought in to do. So. We've still got Brace out, although did somebody not see he was back in training this week? Yeah, he's, he was training the other day. Plans yeah, out about he's, it, so. he's back in training this week, so getting there. I don't know anything about Peacock's injury and how long he's going to be out for. Um, well, I know he went to the Colin Shields testimonial. Um, and I don't know if he actually played. I don't, don't, don't I think no, he, he was on the bench. I think he, he was, was, he was just coaching, yeah. so... Um, hopefully, I mean, hopefully we can get him back soon as well and get back to having those four lines rolling. Um, but yeah, you know, you point out, it's a good point, we have been a few players short. Um, I don't think, I don't know if you've actually rolled out a full quota of imports in any game this season at all. In fact, my guess is we probably haven't. Um, so, yeah. Um, after all that, we got a four-point weekend. We're looking to Edinburgh on Saturday. Um, we've got a wee break and then you know the Christmas period as we said earlier on is going to be a real tester right, over December uh, most of the big teams are we'll be playing Belfast we'll be playing Cardiff Nottingham Sheffields rather than the Guildford's Milton Keynes of this world so um, yeah we'll see how it goes for next month that's why it was so important to get out of, get all the victories we could this, this month because next even if we're like playing as well as we have in the past, not this team, like the previous clan teams, that's a December's a really tough month for any team in this league, you know, so we're going to, we can't be expected to take full points in, in that in December, so it was important to, to get the wins together this month. Yeah, I mean as far as the, the league standings go um, you know, we're still not in a playoff position, I think we're just at ninth, is it? Um I've no idea, I've not checked, it's too depressing. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Yeah, we're sitting at, we're sitting in ninth. Um, so but we're not, you know, we're only one point behind Coventry um, in terms of getting that eighth place with the same number of games. So the two games against Coventry are going to be pretty important. Um, and albeit Milton Keynes have got only two points ahead, and you know they've got two games more. So you know we're starting to fight for a playoff position now. So December is going to be a big month, and it'll be interesting to see. Mental note. The end of December, are we going to still be sitting uh, in ninth, or are we going to have improved on that? Let's see. Okay, um, one thing that we can maybe just touch on um, was the director's Q and A. Um, I think I don't think any of us were were there because we were wanted to keep our season tickets. Um, <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> did we lose you there, Stephen? Aye, I don't know what happened. <laughs> See, it's, it's not live, but we're not cutting in it. So, um, <laughs> one of the most astounding things that I was reading on the forum about some of the answers and the questions. One of the more um, things that kind of caught my eye was the Matt Keith thing where Gareth uh, was supposed to have said, and I'm obviously taking the poster's words at it, and other people have reinforced it, um, that the hardest thing he had to do was tell Matt Keith he wasn't coming back. Um, you know, the things that pop out in mind for that, for me in particular, would be, I think Matt Keith would be a standout in this team, do you know what I mean? Um, so that surprises me, uh, Jennifer, I mean, what would you think, Matt Keith, have been back this year? Would you have been happy with that? The number of times I have kind of sat and said, you know, who we're missing, do you know, who we're missing. And as I said, Pitt and Keith are the two the two names that always crop up. But yeah, no, definitely. Especially because he's a centre as well. Because we've, we've, we've been struggling with that, especially with um, Peacock out as well. But no, I, I never had a problem with Matt Keith. Keith yeah, last year the, the points production kind of came away, but I think that was the whole team full stop, rather than just specifically being down to him. So, Yeah, the thing with Matt Keith as well, though, it wasn't just about the points with him. He was a you know fantastic leader. Um, he was he would lead by example, and he also um, was a fantastic two-way player. And you know Nobody put his heart in his sleeve as much that I can think of um, over the last few years about the clan winning and losing than, than Matt himself. Um, Stephen, you know, yourself and Matt Keith, was it a surprise to you that Gareth said this? Yeah, because he said that all players' decisions were going to be made by the coach. And then he said this when I'm pretty sure from what I read, and I might be wrong, but I'm sure it said at the end, uh, the end of last season that this discussion took place when we didn't have a coach, when we didn't have, when John Tripp wasn't, Probably didn't even know where Brayhead was at the time. It just it seems a bit strange the choice of words that were used um, at at that time. But I wasn't there, so who knows? It's, it may be just more more things that were being fed that people want us to hear. But we'll never find out the truth to the matter. But I'm with you. Uh, even though he had a, a poorer season by Matt Keefe standards last year, I thought he really struggled at times last year. I don't know if it was injury or just age might have been catching up with him but he'd still be a, a, a fantastic player for the clan uh, given the, the players we've got this season and as well when you also heard one of the other answers about you know all the imports were going to be John Tripp's decision uh, how did I mean I don't know he never answered that how did Gareth know that John Tripp didn't want Matt Keith exactly That's a, it's just it's, it's it doesn't add up if you're looking at all the bits of information that have trickled out of the the room from that, and it's, it's just a strange one, really. You know, it's from what I heard, and this is just this might not be true either. That Matt Keith didn't have any intentions of of returning this season. He found a job outside of hockey. I've, I've heard that from a few people. I don't think he's even mentioned the clan on Twitter <laughs> since he's left. So, so who knows? Um, I don't know what I think about that one. I just found the whole situation strange, given the what we've heard all season that it's going to be Tripp's decision to and who plays for the clan, and then seeing uh, comments like that coming out of the, the Q and A. 
Yeah, it was a strange sort of... I mean, I don't think MD actually asked Gareth. I think he volunteered the information, which made it even even more strange. And I think it's pretty clear also from, you know, the other comments that night that um, it's Matt Keith that's going to quite rightly begin up on the Wall of Fame, Jen. Yeah, no, without a doubt. I mean, obviously, there's not going to be a big reveal of that, but no, there's nobody more deserving um, than Matt Keith. Um, although... Obviously, Scott Pitt would have been a close second, being our highest ever ever scorer. It's just a shame that both of them have left in the same season. But I, I think that Matt Keith definitely is the right right choice out of the two of them. Um, the Q and A in general, I think, um, just talking to people who were there, um, it seemed to be kind of as we thought it might be. Um, you know, the the, the, the kind of there was no. People were asking questions, but it was quite well controlled and that there was no comebacks. There was no questioning the answer, if you like. Um, there was no recourse. Um, you know, but you, you know when you're going to something like this, and we talked about it last time, you're not going to get any sort of revelations, if you like. You know, nothing controversial is going to come out of these sort of things. And, you know, they're not. nobody's going to sit there and say, you know, you know, things aren't all really rosy and everything's going to be fine and we're going to recover for this and blah, 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 blah. Um, so, you know, for me in general, I can't, you know, even if I could have went, if I wasn't at work, you know, I don't think I've really missed anything. Do you, do you guys feel as if you missed out and not going? Not no. really, and there's more games that I'm going to miss because of work, so, and I'm I'm not that bothered this season, whereas previous seasons I would have been really annoyed. Mario Odyssey is one of the best games I've played, so I'm I'm happy with my my time spent with that and my Switch and wasting any other time at things I can't really be bothered with. Get going to games has been a bit of a struggle this season. Um, just due to I don't know I've, my role and work has changed. I've moved to moved to a different shift and my body clock's all over the place. But I'm I'm like Jen. Like if the not last season a bad example right enough, but seasons before I'd be really disappointed that if I couldn't make a game in this year, it just, I don't know, just seems to be a complete disconnect between myself and the clan just now. And it, it, it's it's not just on ice performances, sadly, which is making me feel like this. Um, I think um, when you're talking about disconnects, I think, I'll, you know, I, I hate to say it, but a lot of people are feeling it this year. Um, I mean, it was brought brought to my attention earlier on um, the, in the day about a review some guy had put up, and I've put it on the forum. Um, I'm not going to go into too much details, but it just seems like the way the guy was treated is... You know, there's two sides to every story, Jen, but it just seems the way the guy was treated. You're trying to bring guys, people, families into the sport. He seems to... This is, seems as if it was his first game. Brings his family a four along. There seems to be a mix-up with the tickets... And it seems that whatever's happened, he's not been satisfied and he's not coming back. I mean, but the guy's sitting there saying it's a shame because the kids seem to enjoy it. And, and you're kind of wondering, well, this is part of the disconnect, isn't it? Where people just feel as if, that, you know, you're, you're, you're not really treated as important um, by a lot of, by some of the staff anyway. Uh, and but the general feeling around the club seems to be that and, 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 and there's not really much change. I mean, I know we're possibly because of the way things have turned out, the way the podcast is and stuff. Um we've had some some rubs and run ins and um but it's not just I mean I'm talking to a lot of people that feel the same way and it's a real shame. Um and we were you know, we were going to talk a wee bit about the attendances. The attendances have definitely dropped this year. Um we, we didn't even manage to get three thousand for a D game, which last year we would probably have got. And it's a combination of, you know, the team not playing well and, and probably the disconnect. It is. Um, like, I've said before that I don't mind losing. I've followed the Maple Leafs for 20 years, so I'm used to, used to losing for the most part, you know. So it, it's the performance that goes along with it. And most of the time, like, it's no like we could say, oh, that game that 5 humped is 7-1, we played all right, because it's, it's belying ourselves. So the like, people, especially... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, not diehard fans, so diehard casual fans, yeah. especially casual fans. They're on the go to go. If they're enjoying, the, if there's loads of goals, they're, they're enjoying the game. They're having a good night of it, and a lot of the time, that's just not been the case. You know, it's at all for the way the team's been playing. And if you add to that poor off ice managing of certain incidents, like the one you just touched on, 
it's got to just leave a bad taste in people's mouths and they're not going to come back and they'll find something else to do like the cinema or football or or whatever so the, the club really need to look at everything they're doing and don't just say oh this is the way we do it this is how we're going to continue to do it always look for ways to improve because that's the only way you're going to keep people interested yeah I mean I don't I don't know much about the situation and you can only take you know that at face value I'm- 